good morning before we practice a uh, breathing meditation uh, i will explain a little bit about our mind you know there are some there are there's a chapter called chitta vagga in dhammapada uh, that chapter explains how our mind is working and this uh, behavior and uh, Stanza number 35, I will read in Pali, Dunni gaha sa lahu no, yatta kama ni pati no, chitta sa damato sadhu, chittang guttang sukavahang. The next one, Sududdha sang sunipunang yatta kama ni pati no, chittang rakheta me davi, chittang guttang sukavahang. Those two stanzas, number 35 and 36. The meaning is, uh, the first one, Dun nigaha salahuno. The first one is nigaha means uh, check. Dun nigaha means hard to check. Our mind is hard to check. Mind is hard to check. Then lahuno. Lahuno means a uh, swift. Lahuno. Then yatta kama nipatino. Yatta kama nipatu. Nipati no means lands, landing. Yatta kama. Yatta means wherever. Wherever kama means desire. Wherever desire arises, then our mind land there, lands there. It's through eye, through ears, nose, tongue body like that and wherever the desire or like arises our mind land lands there and th that is the meaning and dunni gahasa hard to check lahuno swift and uh, wherever it will or desire then lands there and chitta se damato sadhu Chitta sa damato sadhu. Sadhu is good. Sadhu is good. Damato means trained. And chitta sa means mind. It's better to train our mind or control our mind. It's better to control our mind. Good to control our mind. Then the chittang dantang sukavahang. Chittang again mind. Dantang control or tamed then sukha vahan sukha happiness avahan brings when we control our mind then happiness brings us the tame or control mind that is the meaning of that uh, stanza then number two again the same explanation same thing be different Sududdha sang sunipunang yatta kama nipatinang chittang rakheta medavi chittang guttang sukavahang. Again, Sududdha sang, dasang, dasa means uh, see. Uh, Sududdha sang means very difficult to see. Uh, the mind is very hard to perceive or see. Sududdha sang then sunipunang, then extremely subtle this mind again yatta kama nipati nang flits wherever it will or desire the same thing explained in the first one uh, wherever the desire arises then the lands the mind then the, the last part of this stanza is chittang rakheta medavi Medhavi, the wise people, wise men or wise men, chittang, this mind, rakheta, guard. And they can guard the vinyu or medhavi. The wise person can guard this uh, uh, subtle and also hard to control, hard to see. That mind can guard or control. Then chittang, guttang, sukavahang. The first one said chittang dantang sukavahang. This one chittang 
guttang sukavang dantang means tame or control then chitang guttang means guarded mind guarded mind brings happiness control mind brings happiness and guarded mind also brings happiness those two stanzas and uh, again another stanza also explains our mind yata agarang duchan nanguti samati vijjati evang abhavitan chittan rago samati vijjati the next one yata agarang suchan nang utti samati vijjati evang subhavitan chittan rago na samati vijjati i think you know some uh, words in pali raga uh, raga yatha agaran duchan nangutti samati vijjati evang abhavitan chittan rago samati samati vijjati at least uh, you can recognize the meaning of two words chittan and raga and the first one yatha agaran duchan nangutti samati vijjati yatha is as yata as agarang agarang house duchannang duchann channa means covered du means ill ill thatched ill thatched house as ill thatched house wutti samiti vijjati wutti means rain uh, rain penetrates the house ill thatched house will penetrates the rain if we don properly our roof then the rain or water comes in and wet all the things utti samat evang evang means like like that abhavitam chittam chittam again mind abhavit uh undeveloped mind undeveloped mind abhavitan chittam rago the lust or desire samiti vijjati penetrate eh? the lust penetrates an undeveloped mind that is the meaning then the, we have to well thatched our mind well covered well protect our mind or well guarded or developed mind the yata agarang suchanang vutti samiti vijjati evam subha subhavitam chittam rago na samiti vijjati if we develop or guarded or well thatched house then the rain not come in into house and wet the things but uh, if we well thatched house then can protect from the rain eh? like that we have to well guarded our mind and well protected our mind then the last no harm to our mind hmm? and uh, the defiled mind eh? defiled mind uh, we, the defile always uh disturb our minds uh, then the the defilements or akusala or unwholesome qualities defile our minds always defile our minds that's why we uh try to meditate with meditate to protect or guard our minds from the defilements the one list is 10 eh? there are 10 defilements listed in the dhamma the first one i think you know the lobha dosa and moha those three unwholesome roots lobha dosa and moha greed hatred and delusion then the fourth one is a mana mana conceit and ditti speculative views mana then ditti number 6 is vichikicha skeptical doubt and thina mental topper and uddacha or restlessness and uh, ahirika shamelessness and anuttappa 
lack of moral dread or unconsciousness. Those are the defilements, unwholesome. And uh, one, two, and three, I think you know, Akusalamula, unwholesome roots, and six, seven, eight belongs to Nivarana, hindrances, Pancha Nivarana. There are five hindrances, Vichagicha, Thina, and Uddacha, those three. Sceptical doubt, torpor, and restlessness. And another list we can find in the Dhamma, uh, Upakilesa, called Upakilesa, impurities, corruptions, imperfections. There are 16 unwholesome or oh, impurities. Those are called Chitta, chitta Upakilesa. Also, we can say impurities of the mind. Uh, listed like this. The first one is Abhijja. Abhijja, Visama Loba, a strong Loba, a strong desire called covetousness. Hmm? Covetousness or unrighteous greed. Then number two is Vyapada, ill will. Number three is Khoda or anger. Upanaha, hostility. Makha, Denigration, palace, domineering, and issa, envy, macharya, jealousy, maya, hypocrisy, satya, fraud, thamba, obstinacy, and saramba, presumption, and then the mana, conceit, atimana, arrogance, mother, Vanity, Pamada, negligence, those are the list. Sixteen, Upakilesa. Hmm? Kilesa, the main, Upakilesa upak means sub like sub, but uh, some are uh, so main uh, kilesas here. Yeah. Then the, uh, when we practice meditation, so many kilesas come to our mind and uh, dilute or uh, disturb our mind. That's why when we practice meditation, we have to recognize the defilements or killers, and we have to uh, avoid them. We have to recognize and just forget or avoid them. That is the best way, because uh, we can't control the mind, uh, the behavior is Always thoughts comes, good or bad. But uh, when we practice meditation, we have to recognize them. What are the good thoughts and what are the bad thoughts, wholesome or unwholesome. You know, the, when we practice, uh, according to Satipatthana Sutta, uh, one chapter called Chitta Anupasana, hmm? Chitta Anupasana, we have to uh, see uh, deeply see our mind, what happened in our minds, what uh, what are the things come to our mind and how to recognize. And uh, okay, now we practice uh, breathing meditation. Eh? Negligence, uh, you know, sometimes we postpone the things. Eh? If you want to do wholesome things, wholesome activities, then we always postpone. That is a negligence, according to my mind, yeah. And then obstinate? Uh, stubbornness? Thumb, yes. Stubborn means uh, uh, you... you you don't like to listen to others, to teachers or husband or that one. <laughs> because, uh, you know, the even teacher give advice. Eh? You just listen, but uh, you don't uh, practice. 
Uh, that is the, I think, thumber, stubborn. Mm. And that one also connected to uh, mana. You don't listen to others because you have mana in your mind. What's mana? Mana is a conceit. Right. Yes, mana is a strong defilement. That uh, mana totally destroy or eradicate until when you attain arahanship. Uh, that's the la last uh, third of one. Sakaiditi vichigicca silabata param, the fetters, eh? Yes, one of the strong fetters, mana. Mana, uddhacca and avicca, the last three. Hmm. Okay. Let us have practice breathing meditation or oh, Dhamma discussion. We will practice eh? at least 10, 10, 10, 15 minutes breathing medita meditation. Eh? Okay, close our eyes gently. Keep back or straight and relax mind and body. Take deep breath in and out a few times and practice normal way. And we try to recognize the defilements, eh? good and bad uh, thoughts.
I selected uh, one sutta from Sutta Nipata for today's Dhamma discussion. Uh, the sutta called Nava Sutta. You know the meaning? Nava. Nava is a boat, a boat or a ship. Nava. Nava Sutta, the boat. And uh, <coughs> in the commentary, it's named Dhamma Sutta. Dhamma Sutta. Uh, in the text, it's called Nava Sutta, the boat or the ship. This one from Sutta Nipata. Uh, the first chapter called <coughs> Uraga Sutta, second one Chulavagga. Chulavagga Sutta number eight, Nava Sutta. Only eight stanzas or gathas are there. Nava Sutta. This Nava equal to Dhamma. That's why the commentary named it uh, as Dhamma. Uh, Nava, ship or boat, as a Dhamma. And uh, who is Navika? Navika, the meaning is sailor or rider, shower of the way, the gui gui guide. Hmm. Navika. Uh, is a teacher or a kalyanamitta, is the uh, sailor, not just mere sailor, skilled sailor, a skilled sailor, or the teacher, a skilled or learned teacher, or a learned friend. Is the person who a shower of the way, shower of the way. In Pali, there are two words: magga vidu or magga nyu. Magga means path, vidu means nova, nova of the path, and magga nyu, nyu also knows, eh? knows or yeah, knows the path, nova of the path, magga nyu or magga. We do. Those are called Acharya, Kalyanamitta, or Sahayaka. Acharya, teacher, Kalyanamitta, good friend. Sahayaka, uh, like a helper. Uh, or, yeah, Sahayaka. Sahayaka, you can say, uh, the wife can say, Sahayaka, husband. Husband can say Sahayika in the female uh, wife, Sahayaka. And uh, those are endowed with Dhamma. Then the first, we have to uh, choose a good Acharya to cross the river or the ocean. Uh, we have to choose a good sailor. And uh, if you want to cross this sansara, uh, we need a good guide or good teacher or good uh, friend. Otherwise, uh, it's dif very difficult to cross over this sansara. Acharya Kalyanamitta and uh, to develop our uh, spiritual qualities. That's why we have to choose good or good teacher or good uh, friend to develop our good qualities or uh, spiritual qualities and cross the river or sea or this sankhara or sansara. I think you know sankhara. Sankhara is uh, formations, mental formations. Uh, and O uh, Sankara, O Sansara, Sansara, I think you know Sansara, the circle of 
birth and death. And there are eight <coughs> good qualities of a person explained in the Dhamma. <coughs> eight good qualities. The non number one is he is a devotee of the Dhamma with sellers faith. It's a devotee of the Dhamma with sellers faith. The first quality of the good teacher, good friend. And number two is he has a <coughs> sense of shame. Sense of shame. The Pali term is hiri. <coughs> Moral shame. Number three, he has a sense of fear. Hmm? Moral fear or moral dread. Pali term is ottappa. These two call loka, palaka, dhamma. Uh, those two protect the world. If we don't have hiri and ottappa, uh, we can do anything. That's why <coughs> protect the world, those two, hiri and ottappa, moral shame and dread. The number four is he is not idle. Thina. Eh? He is not idle and lethargic or lethargic. Thina eh? middha. And he is wise. We knew. He is calm and not hot tempered and irritable. Santo should be santa. Santo. Calm. And number seven, he does not develop hatred towards others. Avyapad. Eh? Does not develop hatred towards others. And uh, last one, he listens to the good advice of others. Eh? Those are the good qualities of a good friend or a good teacher. And also the other way, there are 16 bad qualities of an evil person uh, have been listed in the Dhamma, 16 qualities. Eh? The good persons explain eight, here yeah, double, 16 bad qualities. Number one, he is a slave to low desire. Slave to low desire, excessive desire for sensual pleasure especially. And also, I think you know some uh, bad behaviors like uh, drinking, alcohol, gambling, all those things, excessive sensual desires related to. <coughs> then number two is, he speaks highly of himself and looks down on others. Atukkansana uh, paravambana in Pali. Atukkansana, he prays himself and looks down on others, Atukkansana and Paravambana. Number three is, he, his anger increases. <coughs> his anger increases. I think you know how to uh, increase the anger. Normally, we have like and dislike. Even Arahants, they have like and dislike. Eh? If they like, the, even Arahants, they like to go, they <laughs> go. They don't like not go or walking. And uh, if they like to drink uh, water or medicine, they drink. They don't like, no. And some foods like they like to eat, if they eat. If they don't like, they don't, do not eat. Like like and dislike, even arans they have. That's the normal way. Eh? Uh, like and dislike. But you know the the roots like akusala mula, loba, then dosa. Uh, dosa is a root. No any harm or uh, it's we have, but no any unwholesome deeds we collect. Hmm? The, just mula, roots we have with us. But arahants, they don't have even the root of loba, dosa and moha. Okay, just a root. Then it's again a stronger level is a patigar. And also, kodha, 
खोप फटिग वेर दो सब वेरी स्ट्रोंग वी हैव लाइक खोप क्रोध वेर देन वी एक्रूड अनहोल सम डीड्स एंड ऑल्सो इट्स इंक्रीज फर्दर देन वी आग्यू विथ इच अदर वी वी यूज द वर्ड्स एंड आग्यू विथ अदर्स वी यूज Uh, harsh words bad words then we accrue again unwholesome and the last one is kalaha kalaha so we fight each other and the last one is kill the people or animal <coughs> the excessive or strongest level uh, uh, that's why his anger increases you can see here number 4 is because of <coughs> his anger <coughs> hatred towards others developed hatred anger become hatred eh? where towards other others develops number 5 develop hatred brings constant quarrels with others developed hatred brings constant quarrels with others then number 6 is speech is always angry use harsh words i think you know parusa vacha no pleasant words anymore and uh, no any <coughs> words like hadayangam please in the mind and pemani loud eh? words and kanna sukha pleasing to the ear hadayangam eh? pemani <coughs> and khanna sukha that person never used those words use hard harsh words parusa vacha number 6 is while he himself has acted wrongly he accuses others number 8 while being the wrong doer he denigrates those who accuse him number 9 while being the wrong doer he makes false accusations against others number 10 when his wrong actions are noted he changes the talk and express expresses anger and disgust for others then the number 11 when his wrong actions are questioned he will not admit the action and uh, falsifies his character when his wrong wrong actions are questioned he will not admit the action and falsifies his character number 12 he ignores he ignores and suppresses virtuous qualities of others declaring the greatness of himself he ignores and suppresses virtuous virtuous qualities of others declaring the greatness of himself the number 12 number 13 he dislikes others reaching his own level Eh? because he has jealousy eh? because of the jealousy and uh, number 14 he deceives others to believe in his own non-existent goodness concealing his faults with cunning number 14 eh? number 15 he has stubborn and insolent or impudent cheeky or ill mannered number 16 he is clinging to his own wrong views and thoughts like a crocodile holding its prey thoroughly those are the bad qualities of a bad person then we have to 
choice a good person with good qualities or with the Dhamma. And we have to be careful to choose a good advisor or teacher to cross this sansara. Then the, this uh, thing, when we think about these 16, all these are related to uh, bodily, especially verbal uh, actions, eh? verbal actions and mental. This Nava Sutta explains who is good teacher. Hmm? The stanza number three uh, explains who is good teacher. It says, one who follows an inferior and foolish teacher who has not realized the meaning and who is jealous approaches death without comprehending the Dhamma and unrelieved of doubt. That's the, uh, the meaning of Gata number three, stanza number three. One who follows an inferior and foolish teacher who has not realized the meaning and who is jealous approaches death without comprehend the Dhamma and unrelieved of doubt. That's the meaning. Then again, the next stanza explains, as a man who has fallen into an overflowing river with deep water and a rapid current, how can he help others to cross it? As a man who has fallen into an overflowing river with deep water, and rapid current, how can he help others to cross it? That the simile Buddha gave. Then the next stanza, number five, explains, even so, he has not comprehended the Dhamma, has not paid attention to its meaning as expounded by the learned, being himself without knowledge, how can he make others understand? The next stanza explain further, as one who having boarded a boat, firmly equipped with oars and a rudder, and knowing the method is skillful and wise, by means of it, he causes many others to cross over. That's the good sailor. He can help others to cross the river. One, as one who having boarded a boat firmly, equipped with oars, I think you know oars, and a rudder, and knowing the method is skillful and wise, by means of it, he causes many others to cross over. The Gata says, Evang pi yo vedagu bhavitato bahusuto hoti aveda dhammu soko pare nijapayo pajanang sota vadanupa nisupa panno. He is a skill with vedagu. Vedagu means the term, Pali term, Vedagu is knowledgeable person, eh? knowledgeable, he who knows the Dhamma or the truth, Vedagu. And uh, the next one also, the Vedagu, uh, he knows these three trainings, or three types of trainings, mm? three with the Siksha, Siksha means a training, three types of Siksha. Six, I think you know. Uh, what are the three types of six? Uh, the training, three types of training, sila, samadhi, and panya. Those are the three types of training. Eh? He knows, uh, the teacher, he knows these three, sila, samadhi, panya. And bhavi tatto, well-trained or self-trained, indriya, sangvara, he trained his body. Indriya Sangvara, 
and train body and also mind well disciplined and the next word use bahu suto learned eh? bahu means more suto means listen eh? more listen he has listened more things eh? not uh, like this like today no books and things and also uh, the only thing uh, they can do only thing they listen to the dhamma teachers like that that's why that word used those days bahu sutta uh, listen more things bahu sutta and uh, another word aveda dhammo again veda means uh, no the dhamma the truth the four noble truth <coughs> or the eightfold path or the paticca samuppada those things the number 7 stands on number 7 even so he who has attained knowledge and has a well trained well trained mind who is learned and unmoved clearly knows he can help others to understand who are attentive to listen and ready to comprehend that the number 7 the last one in nava sutta number 8 tasma have sapurisan bajeta meda vinang chev bahu sutanche anyaya attang patiwijja mano vinyat dammo sasukhang labheta if you associate a good teacher you can <coughs> uh, get the happy uh, or the nibbana nibbana is the highest happiness sukhang labeta means you can get or you can gain this stands says <coughs> tasma therefore uh sapurisang bajeta you have to bajeta means associate with a good person or good teacher virtuous teacher virtuous mitta and uh, that teacher also endowed with medhavi medhavi means knowledge and bahusutta uh learned or listen more and anyaya anyaya attang patiwijjamano anyaya means no he knows the meaning of the dhamma and patiwijjamano he practice the dhamma and if you associate like that teacher you can cross uh, this sansara uh, following his teaching so advice therefore one should surely associate with a good or virtuous man or teacher or mitta who is wise and learned he should know the meaning and practice according to and gaining understanding of the dhamma will attain happiness or nibbana sukha nibbana paramam sukhanda highest happiness or also we can say lokuttara sukha that uh, happiness beyond this mundane level that is uh, highest happiness then the this uh, nava sutta use one word ogha ogha means river ocean flood and uh, when we think about the dhamma what is the ogas what are the ogas think you know ogas there are four ogas eh floods here four kama ogha ditti ogha bhava oga last one avijja oga kama ditti bhava and avijja those are the ogas floods four types of floods uh, you know the some suttas like uh, early suttas in manjimi nikaya sanyutta nikaya we can find only three ogas eh? but in the 
Maha Parinibbana Sutta, uh, we can find another one and also explain in the commentary four augurs, but in the early suttas only three augurs Kama, uh, Bhava, and Navija, not Ditti Ogre in those suttas. Eh? Bhava is a becoming existence. Oh, yeah. 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 Kama Ogre. Uh, yes, karma is sensual pleasures and ditti, yes. yes, wrong views, and bhava, desire for existence, and the last one is avijja, ignorance, those are the ogres, floods. <coughs> we have to cross those four ogres. <coughs> then the, again, this, uh, Mahaparinibbana Sutta in Diginikaya explains this ogre equal to asava. <coughs> I think you know asava. Asava, influxes, cankers, taints, corruptions, intoxicants, impurities, defilements. Eh? Asava. For asava. But in the Sabbasava Sutta, Sabbasava Sutta in Majjhuminikaya, a lot asavas. Eh? Sabha means all asavas. I think 40, four, more than 40 asavas. But uh, Mahaparinibbana Sutta, Buddha explained these are the asavas, four asavas. Uh, four asavas. For example, yes, Mahaparinibbana Sutta, Diginikaya Sutta number 16, Buddha says uh, this is morality, this is concentration, samadhi, this is wisdom, panya. <coughs> then Buddha said further, concentration when imbued with morality brings great fruit and profit. The concentration pervade or filled with morality brings great fruit and <coughs> profit. Then wisdom, panya, when filled with concentration or imbued with Concentration brings great fruit and profit. Concentration imbued with morality. The second one, wisdom, panya, imbued with concentration, samadhi, also brings fruit, great fruit and profit. Then the Buddha said, finally, the mind imbued with wisdom becomes completely free from the corruptions or asavas. The mind imbued with wisdom becomes completely free from the asavas, that is, from the corruption of sensuality, eh? uh, of becoming, of false views, and of ignorance. Uh, those four Buddha mentioned, four asavas. And this uh, Sutta Nava Sutta, uh, mention one, Oratira and pa Paratira, two shows, this show and the other show. Oratira means this side, this show, near show. Uh, Paratira is far show or the other side of the river. Eh? What are those two, this side and the other side? Near show and far show. Eh? Near show is sansara, the other show is nibbana. Yes, like that. Near show and far show. And also, this side is uh, mundane, the other side supra mundane, like that. Uh, yeah, nibbana and uh, this sansara and nibbana, two sides. And uh, going beyond. Going beyond it, parangama. Parangama means going beyond. There is a sutta also called parangama sutta. Parangama sutta. Going beyond sutta. This one, Sanyutta Nikaya, Magga Sanyutta. You know the <coughs> in Magga Sanyutta, all the sutta, suttas related to Eightfold Path. Eh? Eightfold Path. That's why Magga Sanyutta. The chapter called Magga Sangyutta, all the suttas related to Eightfold Path, Magga, Ariyatanga Magga. 
Then the Buddha was in the uh, Savatthi. Then Buddha said, because these eight things, eight things means the eight, eightfold path, eh? when developed and cultivated, lead to going beyond from the near shore to the far shore. Eh? What is eight? Sammaditi, Sammasankapa, so forth. Eh? And uh, again, that sutta uh, says, Buddha says, Appakate manusesu ye jana paragamino atayang itra paja tira meva nu davati. Appaka te manusesu. Manusesu, manusesu means uh, among the human beings. Eh? Among the human human beings, apaka, a little, uh, or a few uh, persons or members, uh, paragamino, go beyond this sansara. Only few, only little amount of people go to the other side or go to nibbana. Then other, then. Itara pajam is the other people, other worldly people. Tira mevanu dhavati. They run here and they are pen down along the bank. Uh, along the bank. He said, few are those among humankind who go beyond to the far shore. The rest of the people merely run up and down along the bank. And uh, yeah, then the another stanza in that sutta, Parangama Sutta, Yecha ko sammadakhate damme dammanu atino te jana parame santi machude yang suduttarang. When the Dhamma is rightly expounded, those who practice and accord according to the Dhamma, eh, accord with the Dhamma, are the people who will go beyond. When the Dhamma is rightly expounded, those who practice in accord with the Dhamma, they are the people who will go beyond or to a far shore. The realm of death so hard to cross. Then the, another stanza, says kanhan dhamman vipahaya sukhang bhavet pandito oka anokang agam viveke atta duramang kanhan dhamman vipahaya eh? vipahaya means just leave or left eh? kanhan dhamman means kanha means black dhamma black dhamma have, we have to leave the black dhamma. Black dhamma means unwholesome things, eh? uh, wrong things. Kanhan dhamma, vipahaya. We have to leave the kanna dhamma, black dhamma, unwholesome things. And sukhang bhaveta. Sukha means white. White dhamma, we have to bhaveta, develop. We have to leave behind all the unwholesome things and we have to develop the white things. Eh? White thing means wholesome deeds. The pandito, pandito means wise people, they do that way, and they act that way. Then oka anokang agama, having come from home into homelessness, homeless, where it is hard to take delight. Having left behind the dark qualities of akusala, the wise man should develop the bright ones, having come from home into homeless, where it is hard to take delight. Huh? They are in seclusion, he should seek delight, having left behind sensual pleasures. Of in nothing, the wise man should cleanse himself of mental defilements. Then ye sang sambodhi angesu samma chittang subhavitang adana patini sagge anupadaya ye rata. 
kina sava juti manto te loke parini buto. Those who whose minds are well developed, samma chittang subhavitang. Those whose minds are well developed in the factors of enlightenment, sambodhi angesu, sambodhi angesu, samma chittang subhavitang. The wise people they develop their mind in the factors of enlightenment. How many factors? Seven factors of enlightenment. The wise person who develops his mind, uh, mind uh, in the seven factors of enlightenment. The first one is sati, had to develop sati, mindfulness. Number two is dhamma vichaya. Uh, investigation of the Dhamma. Number three is Virya energy or effort. Eh? Virya then uh, Sati Dhamma Vichya Virya then Piti rapture yeah rapture then Pasaddi calm or calmness then the Pasaddi then Samadhi concentration, and the last one, upekha, uh, equanimity. Those are the seven factors of enlightenment. We have to develop the wise, develop these uh, seven factors of enlightenment. Then anupadaya ye ratha, who through non-clinging find delight in the relinquishment of grasping. There no clinging. Uh, anupadaya, then here ratha means clinging or grasping. Kina sava, those are kina sava. Kina means destroyed uh, or killed. Asava means, yes, defilements, uh, asavas. That person destroyed all the asavas. Juti manto. Uh, juti luminous ones te loke parinibhuta with the taints destroyed are fully quenched in the world eh? explain uh, about an arahant they are the one who cross this sansara and yes another two stands us this one also uh, from Sanyutta Nikaya, Sutta called Ogha Sutta, eh? Ogha Sutta, flood, the flood, the English meaning is, uh, oh no, Samudda Sutta, eh? Samudda Sutta, Samudda Sutta, uh, one who has crossed this ocean, so hard to cross, with its dangers of sharks, demons, Waves, don't know demons eh, in the ocean. It says it's with dangers of sharks, demons, and waves. Eh? The knowledge master who has lived the holy life, reach the world's end, is called one gone beyond. And number two, Samudha Sutta number two, one who has expunged lust and hate along with the taints of ignorance has crossed this ocean so hard to cross with its dangers of sharks, demons and waves. Two uh, suttas and uh, the last one finally I would like to mention another one uh, Sanyutta Nikai Devata Sanyutta this uh, a very beautiful sutta. Eh? Thus, have I heard on one occasion the Blessed One was dwelling at Savati in Jeta's Grove, Anatha Pindika's Park. Then, when the night had advanced, a certain devata of stunning beauty, illuminating the entire Jeta's Grove, approached the Blessed One. Having approached, he paid homage to the Blessed One 
stood to one side and said to him, How, dear sir, did you cross the flood? By not halting, friend, and by not straining, I crossed the flood. That's the Buddha's answer, very short. Eh? By not halting, friend, and by not straining, I crossed the flood. But how is it, dear sir, that by not halting and by not straining, you crossed the flood? Then Buddha's reply, when I came to stand still, friend, then I sank. But when I struggled, then I got swept away. It is in this way, friend, that by not halting and by not straining, I crossed the flood. Then the Devata said, after a long time, at least I see a Brahmin who is fully quenched, who by not halting, not straining, has crossed over attachment to the world. What is that meaning? Eh? Halting and straining. Eh? In this sutta explain the middle way, eh? middle way or middle path of the Buddha in another way. For example, not a stay in uh, one place, according to the commentary. Eh? Not a stay in one place is attachment. When you hold it, the, you sink in the sansara. And not pushing forward is aversion. Because we always push the things if you don't like. Uh, then also, then swept away in the sansara also the we, we sink the one thing is sink and kill the swept away also is a danger thing attachment yeah straining means aversion yeah aversion eh? that is the one way explained in the commentary the second way halting by way of defilement one sinks a straining by one way of volitional formation one gets swept away that is another way eh? halting by way of defilement one sinks when we halt the defilement we sinks and a straining by way of volitional formations we swept away and another way that uh, commentary explained three ways. By way of slackness or sloth or thina, one six, eh? when we have thina or slackness or sloth, lethargic, one sinks. And by way of restlessness or uddhacha, one gets swept away. Those three ways the commentary explains. Eh? In the sutta, not any details with the I think that uh, Devata, very uh, smart or skilled one, that's why. Hmm. Okay, the explaining was a uh, uh, good teacher and also who is a bad person, we learned, and also the ogre, floods, four types of floods, and the Nava is the Dhamma and the uh, teacher, all those things explain this Nava Sutta. I think no time for questions. <laughs> okay, thank you for coming and uh, you participated for puja and uh, we practice uh, meditation and uh, to listen the Dhamma. Uh, when we are doing these things, we accrued a lot of merits. Uh, we can share these merits with our departed relatives and devas. And uh, finally, due to these merits, uh, our departed relatives, devas, and every beings, uh, we attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana Mandi. We can say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sabbe buddha bala patta pache kanang chayang balang Arahang tanan chate jena rakhang banda misabaso. Sabbe buddha balapatta pache kanan chayang balang. 
ಅರ್ಹಂತಾನಂಚ ತೇಜೇನ ರಖಂ ಬಂಧಾಮಿ ಸಬ್ಬಸೋ ಸಬ್ಬೇ ಬುದ್ಧ ಬಲ ಪತ್ತ ಪಕ್ಷೇ ಕಾನಂಚ ಯಂ ಬಲಂ ಅರ್ಹಂತಾನಂಚ ತೇಜೇನ ರಖಂ ಬಂಧಾಮಿ ಸಬ್ಬಸೋ ಸಾ